Hello and welcome to JPL in 30, the highlight show for the Jamaica Premier League. This week, we journey to the Jax Hall Sports Complex for Match Week 20, and we kick off our coverage with the first of our doubleheader with Malines United taking on Don Beholden FC. Here are the highlights. When we're looking at these two teams, uh, last time they met, Don Beholden, they won that contest by two goals to one. And Malines, they too have had some success against uh, Don Beholden. And uh, yeah, you could look at it and say pretty much even uh, in their head to head, but goals always in it. And that's a big thing for the neutrals wanting to see uh, a good game and goals always. And we go to the starting lineup for Malines in goal. Harrison will be in goal. Sajina Franks and the player to watch. Uh, Daniel Hardy, Rashawn Livingston. And if Flemings is also there for them, Dewar, Jeremy Nelson, Daniel Hardy, Wilson and Samuels, along with Jason Wright, the prolific player. And they will be playing in a 4-4-2 formation. Jason Wright and Livingston up top. Uh, they're the players expected to bang in the goals for them. But Frankson at right back, he has gotten on the score sheet this season. And, but more so today, we'll be looking to keep uh, this team at bay. We take a look at the starting lineup for Dumby Holden. Last time out, as we say, Nelson, he came off the bench. Hyatt is in goal for them. A Burton Watkins gets back a start in. It was on the bench while Hodges was on the field. Hodges in there as well. Powell, Segui, McCarthy, Merrick, Allen, Thomas, and Nicholas Nelson, who is the player we are watching closely here today because when he got off the bench the last time, he created havoc for Lyme Hall. 4-3-3 is the formation they'll play. McCarthy, always critical in a system like this because he decides to shield the back four and is really good at doing that, one of the best in the business. Full match highlights, Carvel Banton, the man in charge. And a goal, a fixture with a lot of goals. Over the top early. Jeremy Nelson with the opportunity. His brother just showed him here how to score goals. Eight on the season at this point for Nelson. What a finish that was. Came wide to collect. Then the one-two play with Marlon Allen. And a beautiful finish into the far corner beyond Peter Harrison, who could do nothing about this. And after 20 minutes, Dumbo Holden were a goal up. In the first picture this season, they did defeat Malines by two goals to one, with two of them from Nelson himself. In fact, all three goals from Nelson, the Nelson brothers. Jeremy, on that occasion, the only goal. A strike on target from Wilson, which was parried by Damien Hyatt. And then this moment, this is how they'll get back into it. Look at the strength from Jason Wright. A shot which was parried by Hyatt. Not good enough, though. And Adain Samuels on hand found himself in a very advanced position in the centre-back to gain the equaliser for Malines. Right back in it. And that came after just 26 minutes. Good resilience shown by the team in blue. Two minutes later, they would, go, would take the lead. They would have their second. Tyreek Wilson coming into the midfield in this game and providing for his main striker and captain, Jason Wright. Splatting away, just opened his body so well, Jason Wright. Saw where the defender was, had Damian Hyde committed and placed it beyond him to his left-hand side. Wright, his eighth of the season, and Malines with the 2-1 advantage. Marlon Allen drove forward. Solid strike, but it was always going over the top. Lots of power behind it. And in this moment for Wright, a real opportunity. The ball just wouldn't settle for him, though. Staying a bit too high, wouldn't come down in time. Rushed the shot and skewed it off the outside of the right boot. They would go into the half at 2-1, but it wouldn't remain. Nelson, digging in the palms of Peter Harrison, who would push over. And then this moment from the near post. Nelson so much, in, so involved in everything good for Dumbo Holding. And then this moment, Marlon Allen, his first goal in a Dumbo Holden shirt. Scrappy defending from a line. Odin Sam was not recovering quick enough. And Allen slotting away for two all. What a talk it must have been from Lenny Hyde. He could not have imagined a start to the second half like this. Three goals in the space of 11 minutes. This would be the second. A penalty awarded because of the foul on a Shaquem Powell and Nelson. 
Flotting into the far triangle easily beyond Peter Harrison. A brace for Nelson at this point. A 3-2 lead for Dumbo Holding and they weren't finished. Then Nelson bundled over from Odin Samuels. That was very clumsy from the Malines number four. And Nelson would make no mistake, went to the same side that he beat Harrison a couple minutes before. A hat-trick for Nelson, his first of the season. And four goals for Dumbo Holding. Nelson could have had more. Probably should have taken the strike earlier, delayed it, and instead it was deflected out for a corner. He would be taken off, Nicholas Nelson picked up a knock as the game went on. And Malines, desperate to get back into it. Playing provider was Jason Wright, but unfortunately for him, his teammate didn't have the same level of quality inside the box. 4 2, it would finish. Twelve shots, six on target for Dumble Holding. Half on half of the attempts on target as well for Malines. They had eight shots in total. Some 25 fouls between the two. Three yellow cards shown by Carville Banton, and he was pretty lenient. It must be said. A few more could have probably been shown as well. It was a busy day between the sticks for the keepers. Two saves each. Nine corners between the two, and look at that possession stat for double holding 63 percent possession for the team in white and red they leave with a big three points they're back in the playoff spots they defeat malines by four goals to two lisha williams has our man of the match can you guess who it is yeah chris it could be no one else but nicholas nelson a hat trick here today you like to score in clumps and you scored a wonderful hat trick today but i know that first goal was your favorite uh well um we've been working on that and season that set piece we do at the first goal and it came out today yeah, yeah, yeah it's not your first curl finish of the season but you know after you got the three goals you ended up limping off of the field after you have to assure your fans that it's not a serious injury well um i felt like a niggling but you can't take it um serious and i mean so i have to come off and give the next player a chance to show the, show what they have out there I know you're into double digits now in terms of goals for the season. You're right there for the Golden Boot. Is that one of your aspirations for the season? Yes, um, my aim is like get 20, 20 goals in, uh, more in this season. And I'm working on it because the season is long. We have like six games. Yeah. And you certainly have the quality to do it as well. And I'm sure you have a lot of aspirations for Dumbo Holding generally as well to get the team back into the finals and more. Yes, um, we have to keep working hard and focus game after the game and try to beat it um, in top six, you know I mean, and because uh, if you can check the, um, the table, it, it, it's all well close because uh, Mo Mo uh, Montego be on 26, Wattos well, on 27 and we are on 27, so you can't take any, um, the game for granted, so we have to check, score more than goal we can do. And you're up to 30 now, you're in the driver's seat and best of luck for the rest of the season and continue scoring those goals as I know you love to. Yes, thanks. Excellent performance there from Nicholas Nelson. Nothing that we're not used to. He loves scoring here. And you know, he was it was to the bane of this man and his coaching staff. Coach, you had the lead going into halftime, but the first 10 minutes of the second half just didn't go to your liking. No, not at all. Um, I think we had a very good first half. Um, we were compact, very um, organized, and our transition game was, was really good. So at halftime, we spoke about um, Staying compact, staying together, and, and keeping um, Dumbo holding off the clean sheet, but it, it just didn't happen. Yeah, you know, it was a lot of intensity that maybe your team didn't match in the early stages of the second half. Do you think that was the case? Um, I think it's just a matter of, of, of lapse in concentration. We conceded a goal, um, the heads went down, and we just never recovered. Yeah, and you know, this Malines team, you've had a lot of close results in the season so far, especially as of late. I'm sure you won't let that dampen your, spirit, dampen your spirits for the rest of the season. No, um, we, we know we played against a quality team. Um, it would have been a difficult game and we had to, to, to stay together as a team. Um, we did it for just a, a part of the game. So going forward, we know we have to, to look at these errors, work on them and, and try to improve going forward. All right, thank you very much, Coach. Best of luck for the rest of the season. Yeah, man, thank you. Yeah, that was a member of the Malines United coaching staff there. And Coach, it was a tough first half. You didn't create many, maybe as many chances as you would have wanted to. You scored a wonder goal, but in the second half, it, was a, it ended up being a very deserved victory.
Yeah, man, um, um, well deserved. You know, the first half, as I said, um, we were a little bit lackluster. We weren't quick to the ball and they were winning a lot of second balls. And, you know, we were giving away a lot of balls in the midfield. We didn't have uh, the midfielders trying to get behind the defensive line, and that was costing us. As you see, the second half, we made a, a few little bit adjustments in terms of how we were playing, you know, and it paid off. And you mentioned especially midfielders getting in beyond the defensive line and that's what led to the first penalty as well. So that was an excellent adjustment and don't be holding our team that are playing really good football right now. Um, what is your confidence level like going into the business end of the season? Yeah, we have to be confident, you know, because, you know, we're playing catch up to get into the top six. And, and if we're not confident, we're not going to go any further. You know, as you said, the, the first penalty, it was just a, a, te a testament of what the coach said to the midfielders. We, we were stagnant, we weren't getting beyond the line. And you know, they tried it a few times and I think after about two or, two or three tries, we got the penalty off it. Yeah, and only a handful of games left now for the season, especially with teams in and around them. Mobile United who are playing Mount Pleasant shortly and of course Waterhouse. Do you think that they can keep them off now that you're temporarily at least into the top six? Yeah man, we have to do that, you know, we, we just have to do what we have to do. We can't play for them, you know, they have games in and. Um, they are uh, the same amount of game as us and you know I think we have Waterhouse to play again. Both of them we have to play again. We just have to just you know take one one game at a time. Alright, excellent win today coach. Best of luck for the rest of the season. Yeah man, thanks. So Don behold and secure back to back wins and they sit just outside of the playoff spot in seventh position by goal difference, while Malign stay in twelfth position following their ninth loss of the season. We take a break here on JPL in thirty. Stay with us for more right after the break. Welcome back to JPL in 30. Our Sunday doubleheader continues with two rural giants in Montego Bay United and Mount Pleasant Academy locking horns. Let's check out how that one panned out. Anticipate this battle between these two. Promises to be a lot. And then here, yeah, Mount Pleasant, as you said, as earlier this season, getting the better of Montego Bay by two goals to one. And yet a two-all draw before that, that was last season. This is how the champions will line up. It's an unchanged squad. Shaquan Davis between the sticks. McCullough who has five goals so far this season. Cummins, Doxley, Shaquille Dyer, Kimoni Bailey. They're wildly glad to have him back, they would say, from injury. Shaquille Bradford with second on the goal scoring charts with 10. Nathaniel James, the Trinidadian, 19-year-old is in. Romeo Guthrie, the former captain of Arnett Gardens, and Demario Phillips. Daniel Green completes the lineup. He will play in that wide area. Uh, a couple of seasons ago, the leading goal scorer in the Premier League. Yeah, this will start as a 4-3-3. But if you watch Mount Pleasant before, you know there's a lot of rotation. So so much we see Cummings going down on that right-hand side. Their captain, Sule Makala, inverting inside. So much rotation and movement with Mount Pleasant. This Mobile United team, they'll have to be very live to that. This is how they'll line up. They'll be playing with a 4-2-3-1. William Ferreira between the sticks. Hospitalis, the Trinidadian as well. The Brazilians, Correa. And yeah, and Ferreira as well, who wears the number 10 in the middle of the park, who will string things for them. Creativity from a creative voice perspective. Triminam, another Trinidadian in the squad as well. Nevon Turner, Day Nish. Gregson, president, the St. Lucian. And young Leo Campbell in the starting lineup as well to partner Courtney Allen and Wayne Gordon. Yeah, we're going to see maybe not as much rotation as we would see with Mount Pleasant, but this formation, we're going to see maybe see Jordan Fletcher come in field a bit more. We're going to see much more rotation, especially from Ferreira when he drops deep to try and create, try and get more touches on the ball. He's a Brazilian player after all. Big picture. And it required a big central referee in O'Shea Nation. Number two in the land in terms of FIFA officials behind Indian Parchment who is out injured. And yet he had a busy opening to this one. Lots of fouls in it. And this strike from Ferreira, which was stopped at the near post by Shaquan Davis, who he himself had a good game, Shaquan Davis. In fact, both keepers did. Ferreira was called into question here from Romeo Guthrie, but his shot queuing wide. Both teams had their moments in the first half. This was the first goal of the encounter. What a pass from Ferreira who picked up yet another assist. And Wayne Gordon 
opened his body well to slot it past Davis. Davis beaten for pace and accuracy. And Mopay were away, 29 minutes down. Mopay away from home with the one goal lead. Mount Pleasant said, well, look, we are the champions. We know how to fight. We are resilient. We are at home. And Daniel Green found home as he slotted this pass. William Ferrer, not an easy keeper to beat the Brazilians. But Daniel Green, very prolific in this competition. That's his 50th season. The former Golden Boot winner with Mount Pleasant. It was a big battle within the park, within the middle of the park. Courtney Allen had this strike that hit the upright. He came close, Allen. Davis was beaten, but luckily for him, the frame of the goal to his rescue. And then this strike from Phillips. What great technique. Look at this. It was going left of Ferrer at first and then late swirl to the right. Produced the best out of the Brazilian to push it over the bar. Mount Pleasant, they continue to come forward. James with the strike. A difficult technique for the 19 year old and he couldn't get it right. Pulling it wide of Ferrer's goal yet again. This was the best chance of the second half for Mobe United. Ferrer, after allowing that to go across his body, should have put it into the bigger area to the right of Shaquan Davis. Tried to go near post cheekily and the goalkeeper was equal to the task. Then Allen towards the back post and Ferreira probably should have stuck out a left foot. It wasn't to be for Courtney Allen. James produced some telling deliveries from the wide areas, asked some questions, but both defense lines, they stood up strong. They shared the spoils here at the Jackson Sports Complex, one all. Nineteen shots between the two, just seven on target between the two. It was a tight encounter. Look at that. Twenty-two fouls spread evenly. Three yellow cards shown by Onishi O'Shea Nation. They came early and he kept good control of this fixture. There were five corners for Mount Pleasant. They enjoyed majority of the attacking play and a majority of the possession as well at 53%. But even at home, they couldn't break down this stubborn Montego Bay United side. It ends 1-1. Dwight Jeremiah was the old man of the match. The man from St. Lucia, Gregson, President. Uh, President Gregson, you, you, you're from St. Lucia, but you've owned a Jamaica Premier League match today. You played like a man inspired. Uh, just walk me to your role today because you started out as a double alongside to make a double pivot, but very often you were forward making those passes or applying the press. Yeah, my role today was... My role today was joining the attack when we have possession of the ball so that we can have more numbers at top and try and create opportunities for our team. Yeah, that was one aspect of it, but so often you were the man back um, winning that second ball, breaking up an attack, and you didn't show any sign as a player coming back from an hamstring injury. Well, hard work, hard work, hard work. What did you make of your, your teammates' performance today and the point? How do you view the point as a, as a yeah. team? Did you think that you, you're disappointed that you should have more or you're satisfied? Nah, we should have won the game, but it all comes down to moments. We scored and switched off as soon as we scored, and the team took advantage and cost us the game. Well, good performance from you. You were good going forward and good in defence. All the best. Thank you. There we have it. Our man of the match, player of the game. He was, he was quite good um, going forward, uh, coming back. Um, I asked the president how did he feel about the game. He said he felt he should have won it. What is your take on it? Look, it was a very tough game. I mean, both of teams had few chances, but I believe we had the most chance, which, which was with Gia in the second half here, alone with the goalkeeper that could decide the game. A very tough game. I knew the game would be decided by details. So very equal, very balanced. I mean, it's good one point here against Mont Pleasant, but we, we, I think we deserve a win, but... This is waiting for us. That win is waiting for us. I mean, your, 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 your other te the other teams are vying for that six automatic spot. Uh, both of them won today. Um, so at the point, it seems like you have lost some ground. How confident are you that, based on the form of your team, that you're still enough time to get there? Look, we have, if you're not mistaken, six matches away, right? Six matches to finish the round. A lot of points will be dropped, right? So. To be out of the top six now doesn't matter. What matter 
is to be in the top six after the last round, the last match. And a lot of matches to be played, very tough. Premier League is very tough. So we're still there. We're still fighting for it. We're going to fight till the last minute of the last match. Well, your team is showing great fight and it's easy, easy on the eyes to watch as well, coach. Long may it continue. All the best. Thank you very much. Yeah, there we have it. The Santos, he is pleased with his team and a team performance today. Uh, you would have known this team quite well, not quite Montego Bay United, but they don't look like Siba. They gave you a good test today. Well, yes, um, as I said before, it's something that we, we expected. I think we, give the, we gave up too much room, especially in the middle of the park, in the first half to play. We made some adjustments which bear some food for we, us in the second half. It, it's a game where we, we, both teams didn't create enough go scoring opportunity so it could it could have gone either way but please with a point this afternoon i think what you're talking about even in that first half for, for a long spell of it um Mobe was really looking very dangerous but even more so what must have been concerning is the ease with which they could pick a pass that would break that line well exactly that's what that, uh, that that's what i mentioned earlier i think we we gave we gave up too much room too much space to play and, and, and I think the Montego Bay United team they utilized that this afternoon it's in the first half but as I said before the second half was a, a very different ball game yeah we, we spoke off here about the the concerns with the team not scoring enough and you bought on brought on by grave um, Campbell came on just didn't get that cutting edge doesn't seem that dynamic in the final third much to work on there well yes as I say um, we have a few games to go and um, it's, it's down to crunch time now, so we have to get it right. Well, let's hope you crunch the, the numbers right and you get the results, Coach. All the okay, best. Then. Yeah. All right. Big performance by Mobe United holding the champions at home. One apiece, as you could see there. Dumble holding with a 4-2 win over Malines in their earlier game. Goals galore at the Wembley Sports Complex between Vera and Lime All. It finishes 6-2 on the back of a Kemar Bushy Beckford hat-trick. The second hat-trick we saw of the day. It's 5-1, it finished between Waterhouse and Humble Lion. And Andre Fletcher double and Javain Brands on the score sheet yet again to join Justin Dunn as the league's leading goal scorer. Tivoli Gardens and Portmore United nil all after 71 minutes. What a battle between third and fourth in the Jamaica Premier League as you can see there. This is the live table, Mount Pleasant now square on point with Cavalier, but Cavalier with the game in hand as well as the superior goal difference. A chance missed for the defending champions. And there you see the top six as well. Waterhouse back into the sixth position ahead of Dumbo Holding, both with 30. But Waterhouse with a superior goal difference, especially after that 5-1 win. Arnett Gardens not in battle at the moment. And Treasure Beach and Lime Hall still in the relegation. It gets tougher for them as the weeks go by. Here at the Jackson Sports Complex, it's been a pleasure. It's been two top matches. Double holding 4-2 over Malines and Mount Pleasant held by Mobe United one all after 90 minutes. The Real Nephew Jamaica Premier League match week 20. That's how we put a wrap on JPL in 30 on your home of champion Sportsmax. Join us next week for another edition.